this first example is an introduction to this idea of improper integrals. There's a few different types um, that we're going to look at. I think there's just type one and type two. Um, but the improper integrals are ones that either have an asymptote in the integral or there's an infinity sign in one of the limits. So this first one, let's pretend that we don't know that there's an asymptote at um, 1 over x squared x equals 0 and just evaluate this integral. So I'm just going to do the integration. Uh, so I can write this as x minus 2. I can add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. I get minus x to the minus 1. And I can sub these limits in. Minus 1 to the minus 1. Minus. Too many minuses. Uh, minus, minus 1 to the minus 1. Um, which will give me, so that's minus one, that's plus minus one, gives me minus two. Obviously, this is not correct. There's a few different problems with this. One, this is a negative value. And if we sketch this graph, like this. Between one and minus one, we should have a positive answer there, even though the actual This is negative, which is a problem. So no, it's not correct. The problem is that there is an asymptote at x equals zero, which causes the problem. Now, like I said, sometimes this will be an infinite area, <laughs> which we'll say is a divergent area, a divergent integral, or sometimes actually it will have a finite area, it will be convergent. Yeah, so sometimes questions will ask you to say whether something is convergent or divergent. Uh, so I've mentioned this, so there's two ways you can have a proper improper integral. Either there's an asymptote or um, one of the limits is plus or minus infinity. Right, let's have a look at this one. Okay, so this, this is how we're going to deal a little bit longer. So this example two has asked us to show that the integral of 1 over root x is a convergent integral and evaluate the integral. So here's a sketch of your graph, and a sketch of the graph is always a good idea. Um, it's got uh, x is zero included, which is at an asymptote, which is our problem. But just because there's an asymptote there doesn't mean that it's divergent. It doesn't mean that it's, it's um, an infinite area. Actually, this one it says is convergent. It does have a finite area, so we can work it out. So the way to deal with this is wherever you've got a discontinuity in your limits, you're going to replace that limit with a t. Okay. So we've got an asymptote at x equals zero. So that lower limit of zero, I'm going to replace it with a t instead, okay, which we can deal with. That's fine. So I can do this integral. So I'm going to rewrite this as integral between t and 4 and x to the minus a half. Integrate that. So add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. gives us 2x to the half, between 4 and t. And I can sub those limits in. So 2 times 4 to the half minus 2 times t to the half. We get 4 minus 2 to the half. <coughs> okay, so we get an expression for this area in terms of t. We're then going to take the limit of this integral as t tends to 0. So t getting. It's like saying, like we're working out this area, we've got t in here somewhere, but saying we can move this t around. So this is an expression for the area wherever, wherever t is. We're taking the limit as this t tends to zero, and the limit as t tends to zero will be our area. Okay? Sometimes you'll be able to do it, and sometimes you'll get a, a value, which we will in this case. Sometimes you won't be able to do it, and it'll be a divergent integral. So this is equal to the limit as t tends to zero of four minus two to the half. Well, t to the half is just a continuous function. 
it doesn't matter which side you approach it, but you can approach it, so that's fine. So as t tends to zero, this bit tends to zero. So the value of this integral is equal to four. This does have a finite area of four. And you can say therefore the integral. Is convergent. Okay. So whenever you've got an improper integral, this is what you do. You put a t wherever you've got your problem. So where, whether it's a vertical asymptote or whether it's an infinite uh, limit. Do the integration in terms of t and then take the limit as t tends to. Everybody okay with this? Got another one here, another convergent <laughs> integral. So this one shows that this one is a convergent integral and evaluate the integral again. Sketch the graph helps. This one's got an asymptote at x equals four. So obviously you get zero on the bottom if you should have something x equals four. So this time we're going to evaluate the integral between zero and t. It's really easy to always do zero by accident, so make sure you think carefully about it. So the asymptotes at four. Going to do zero and t, and then we're going to take the limit as t tends to four later on. This one is one of your standard um, integrals, one of your standard results that is on the front of your pack. So it's root one squared minus x squared. But so it's an arc sine integral <laughs> with a is four. 16 centimeters. Axine x over 4. So this integrates from ax and x over 4. And between our limits of 0 and t. Substitute these in. We've got arc sine. Of four and then minus arc sine of zero, which is zero. We just get arc sine t over four books. We're then going to take the limit, and you could do this all together if you prefer, by the way. We're going to take the limit as t tends to four in this case, because that's, that's where the asymptote is of arc sine t over four. Again, arc sine t over 4 is continuous. The limit of t, as t tends to 4 is just equal to arc sine 4 of 4, arc sine of 1. Uh, which is going to give you an area of priority with that. Okay, so it seems like a weird answer, but. Yes. In the question, but what's the last one worked out what the value is? Possibly. Where the asymptote is, possibly. They might not always give you the sketch yet. Yeah. It, it will probably work you through it, like the first bit will be. Get the scrap, or where's the asymptote? Right. Um, yeah, you might have to work out. Final example on these type ones. This one here. So, this is the one that we did right at the start. Uh, and it's asking us to show that this one is a divergent integral. Do a quick sketch of this again. So, One over x squared looks like this. We're working out the area, the integral between one and minus one, which obviously includes an asymptote at x equals zero. But we can't tell from looking at it whether it's a divergent or a convergent integral. We've got to work it out a bit more. Now, the two that we've just done um, have had the asymptote at the end of the interval. 
to the left or the right. This one's got the asymptote in the middle. <laughs> um, if you've got the asymptote in the middle, really what you need to do is split this up into two integrals. So one to the left of your asymptote and one to the right of your asymptote, again using P um, instead of zero. Um, for this one, you could just look at one of them. It is symmetrical, so if it was convergent, you would just double that. I'll do it with both of them just to demonstrate everything. It's up to you. Um, so this integral here needs splitting up into two. It needs to be one on the right hand side. So I'm going to say between uh, t and one rather than zero. And it needs to be one from minus one up to t. Right, okay, so split up into two integrals, one either side of that asymptote. Uh, obviously, we write this as x to the minus two and integrate it. So add one to the power and divide by the new power. Minus x to the minus one, same in this one. The, um, what I'm thinking is, if I did it all together like this, my t's are going to end up cancelling out the t, and it's going to look like it's converging. But I need to do them really one at one at a time. So I'm going to do the limits as t tends to zero on these as well separately. So if I don't do this, it's going to look like it is convergent and it's not as convergent. So I'm including the limits right from the start. So limit t tends to zero. If I do this integral, so if I sub in one, um, I get minus one. If I sub in t, I get t to the minus one. Minus minus t to the minus one. And on the other one, there was something t, I get minus t to the minus one. And I get minus minus one to the minus one to two. I've skipped a step there. Now the problem here is these are divergent integrals separately. Obviously, if I'd combine them together, this t and this minus c to the minus one, minus t to the minus one would cancel. But looking at them individually, if I do the limit of this as t tends to zero, I can't do this. This is one over t. It's undefined. So really, I shouldn't try and I shouldn't really do them together. I should do them separately. But these are undefined because if you try and sub t equals zero into this, you can't do it. These are undefined, therefore it's a divergent. Integral. And I think it's usually a bit more obvious than this. So the second type of improper integrals are ones that have infinity as one or both of your limits you could have as well. You do the same thing. So you replace your infinity sign with the letter t, you do your integral, and then at the end you take the limit of that t cancel. Okay. Right, let's have a look at these examples. <coughs> So this one, um, show that this is a convergent integral. Is that a three on the bottom? Um, so show that this is a convergent integral and evaluate the integral. So we've got, it's an improper integral because we've got an infinity sign on the top here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the limit as t tends to infinity of the integral between one and t instead of r over it. So we'll do it all together. All right, this is 4x to the minus 3. And integrate this. So add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. Add 1 gives you minus 2, and if you divide by minus 2, you get minus 2x. So we need t and you 1. <laughs> Uh, so get minus 2t to the minus 2. 
and then minus minus two from subbing in one. Again, skipped out the subbing in step. And then once we get to this point, we can take the limit as t tends to infinity. Now the limit of t tends to infinity of t to the minus two is zero. It's one over t squared and sub in tends to infinity in step, which is zero. So this limit is just equal to that two. So this is a convergent integral. Well, same idea, we're just taking the limit as t tends to infinity instead of a. Well, I don't want convergent. It just means you get an analysis. It's not even. Uh, divergent is divergent. Alright. What about the next one's got infinity uh, for both limits, so we've got plus or minus infinity. It turns out it is also a convergent integral. We we'll do a sketch that graph and see what it looks like if you want. Um this time we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna take the limit as t tends to infinity. But our limit is going to be t on the top and minus t on the bottom. This is one of your standard integrals. I think it's back down, but you can check it on the front. So, yeah, a squared plus x squared arc tan. So, we had a 3, because we've got x squared is 9. This is a third arc tan x over 3. Limit t tends to infinity. Third arc tan x over three between t and minus t. Uh, so be t then. Third arc tan t over three. Minus the third arc tan. Minus two over three. Okay. We're going to take the limit of this now as t tends to infinity. So remember arc tan, we just looked at this one. Arc tan looks like this and has asymptotes at pi over two. And minus pi over two. The, the over three bit in the t over three doesn't matter, okay? Because infinity over three is still infinity, but the over three is inconsequential compared to the infinity. So um, limit of t tends to infinity of arc tan t over three is pi over two, positive infinity. That's a third tan pi over two or pi over six. Limit is arc of arc tan minus t over three. Um, as t tends to infinity. So this will be minus infinity over three, or minus infinity, goes all the way this way. So this one will be uh, a minus pi over two. Okay, the infinity over three is the same as infinity, which is a weird concept. The, the three doesn't matter compared to infinity. So this is pi over six plus pi over six. Get pi over three for this. Yeah, okay. all right with that. Yeah. And I think the final example that we've got here <laughs> is showing that this one's a divergent integral. So this time we've got infinity at top limit. I'm going to do the limit as t tends to infinity of uh, between one and t. There's no asymptotes in this interval. Obviously, there is an asymptote at minus three over two, but it's not between one and infinity, so it's fine. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, it's one over two x. This is one over a linear function. This will integrate to ln. Uh, 
ln 2x plus 3, but we need to perhaps divide by the 2. Sub your limits in. Get a half ln 2t plus 3. That's a half ln to the 5. You don't need the limits once you've evaluated the number and you know whether it's full running. And then if you take the limit of this, as t turns to infinity, the limit of ln infinity is also infinity. So ln is one of those where it kind of looks like it tails off, but it doesn't. It keeps going up forever, just very slowly. It doesn't have an asymptote. They put undefined or infinity or something like that. So this one is a divergent. Okay. Um, sometimes you will get um, algebraic fractions in these improper integrals, which will be hard to work out the behavior as x tends to plus or minus infinity. Okay. Um, sometimes it's it's all right to do, but sometimes it, it's tricky to work out what they'll tend towards. So something like this here, for example, this 6x minus 7 over 2x plus 9. If you put infinity on the top and bottom, you've got an infinity over infinity, and that's not an obvious thing to work out. Um, does it tend to infinity? Does it tend to zero? Does it tend to something else? It, it varies. So the technique for these ones is to divide the top and bottom of your fraction through by the highest power of x. The reason being, while we might not know what happens for infinity over infinity, what happens as x tends to plus or minus infinity for 1 over x. We know that as x tends to plus or minus infinity, x, 1 over x tends to 0, and 1 over x squared tends to 0, and so on. So here, this one, the 6x minus 7 over 2x plus 9, the strategy is to divide this through, the top and bottom through by x. So this will turn into six minus seven over x over two plus nine over x. And the reason this is useful is that now as x tends to plus or minus infinity, seven over x goes to zero, nine over x also goes to zero. So this tends to, 6 over 2, and this fraction, it turns out, tends to 3. Yeah. Bless you. For squared, to do the same thing. So for this one, um, I'm going to expand out the bottom. So I get 3x squared minus 7 plus 2. On the bottom, I've got 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And then to work out what happens as x tends to infinity, I'm going to divide through by the highest power of x. So I'm dividing through by x squared. So I just get 3. I get minus 7 over x plus 2 over x squared. And on the bottom, I just get 4 minus 4 over x plus 1 over x squared. So I've divided the top and bottom through by x squared. As x tends to infinity, all of those fractions go to 0. 7 over x goes to 0, 2 over x squared, 0, 4 over x, 1 over x squared, all go up to 0. But as x tends to infinity, this fraction will tend to 0. Uh, so let's have a look at this one. So determine the exact value of this integral here. Um, one thing you could think to do on this is um, you could think about doing partial fractions, <coughs> which we will want to do to integrate this. Okay. I'm going to start out doing partial fractions on this. So 2x, 2x plus 5. Uh, and so if we do partial fractions on this, this is a over 2x minus 1. So b over 2x plus 5, just a, a standard single maths partial fraction. Times up by those, so you get a times 2x plus 5 
<coughs> b times b times one. And then if I let a, a x equals a half, sorry, <coughs> I get 18 equals 6. A, so a is 3. And if I let x equal minus 5 over 2, a will disappear. And that gives me 18 equals uh, minus 6 b. b equals minus 3. So the integral that we're actually doing is the integral between 1 and infinity of 3 over 2 minus 1 uh, minus 3 over 2 minus 1. Let's do this integration. So these both going to integrate to ln. In fact, let's um, write it in terms of limits and stuff first. So limit as t tends to infinity, changes the top limit to t rather than infinity. Yes, that one should be 5. Thank you. That's 3 over 2x plus 5. Now we can do the integration. I'm doing the limit as t tends to infinity. Integrating these, they're linear on the bottom, so they go to ln. So it goes to 3 over 2, because they need to divide by the 2 in front of the x. And then 2x minus 1, and then minus 3 over 2, and then 2x plus 5. I'm going to combine these LNs together. They've got the same number in front, so I can factorize out 3 over 2. You can actually take it outside the limit. Well, it doesn't affect the limit. And I'm going to combine these LNs together uh, using your log laws. 3 over 2. Limit as t tends to infinity of LN 2x minus 1 over 2x plus 5. Between one and two. Okay. Uh, so limits in. So three over two limit t tends to infinity of ln two t minus one over two t plus five minus what I get when I sub in one which is ln uh, 1 over 7. Okay. Here's where our technique is going to be useful. So we're doing now the limit as t tends to infinity of this fraction inside the ln, before I stop thinking about the ln. Okay. So at the moment, if you just subbed in infinity, you get an infinity over infinity, and you don't know if that is a value, if it's infinity to zero. <coughs> so what I'm going to do in here is divide top and bottom of this fraction through by t. Okay, so if I divide everything through by t, I get 2 minus 1 over t. And get five, uh, sorry, two plus five over two. And obviously, I've got my minus ln. One over seven. As t tends to infinity, the one over t and the five over t tends to zero. So this tends to ln two over two. Let's uh, put two over two in. ln2, which is obviously ln1, ln1, 0. So this is minus 3 over 2 ln7, or you can write this as 3 over 2 ln7. So you take this minus up to the power minus 1 and flip the fraction. So first off, we need to do partial fractions on this algebraic fraction. It's further than that partial fraction. So you need to write this as a over x plus 1, but plus bx plus c over the 2x squared plus 
five because it's got an X squared on the bottom. Um, get your equation from this one. So times up by the two X squared plus five, and you've got BX plus C times X plus one. If you let X equal minus one, you can get rid of the BX and the C. Uh, so you get 14 equals um, 7A, so you get A plus 2. There's no more x's that you can sub in to make bracket 0, so you can pick x equals 0 as an easy one. So you get 10 equals 5A uh, plus C. If A is 2, that just gives you C is 0. For the final one for B, I'm going to compare x squared coefficients. So on the left, I don't have any x squared. On the right, I've got 2a, and I get a bx squared from there. If a is 2, you get b equals minus 4. So your integral becomes the integral between 0 and infinity of uh, 2 over x plus 1 minus 4x over 2x squared plus 5. And because there's an improper interval with infinity at the top, I'm going to write this as the limit as t tends to infinity between 0 and t of 2 over x plus 1 minus 4x over 2x squared plus 5. Okay, so the first step is your partial fraction. Then we're going to do this integration. Uh, so limit as t tends to infinity of 2 over x plus 1 integrates to ln, to ln x plus 1. This, you notice the top is the bottom differentiated in this case, so this is going to just integrate to ln of 2x squared plus 5 between t and 0. You need to combine these together, but to be able to combine these together, you need to get rid of this 2 here, because before I had the same thing at the front, so I just like it out, here I done. So I need to use the power law to take this up, and then I can combine my LNs together. Limit t tends to infinity of LN x plus 1 squared over 2x squared plus 5. Um, actually, technically, don't need the modular signs because that can't be negative. You can leave them in. Um, between t and 0. Okay. Um, and obviously, we're going to expand out the top and sub in our limits. So I'm going to sub in my limits now. Limit t tends to infinity of uh, ln. So I expand this out, I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. So that'll be t squared plus 2t plus 1 over 2t squared plus 5. And then minus what I get when I sub in 0, that'll be uh, ln. Uh, Now, to work out the limit as t tends to infinity of the first one, this fraction here, I'm going to divide the top and bottom of this fraction all <coughs> by t squared. So I get ln of 1 plus 2 over t plus 1 over t squared. Over here, I get 2 plus 5 over t squared minus ln of fifth. As t tends to infinity, all of these fractions tend to zero and you just get left with ln a half. Minus ln a fifth. And if you divide these, you're half divided by a fifth, that gives you ln 5 over 